A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. On behalf of the HK Firodia Memorial Foundation, I, Sulajya Firodia Motwani, extend a very warm welcome to all of you to this presentation ceremony of the 25th HK Firodia Awards in Excellence in Science and Technology. I will be a host this evening, and I will do my best to make this evening memorable for all of you. We have gathered here today to celebrate science and acclaim its heroes. We are here to acknowledge, appreciate, and salute the finest scientific minds of contemporary India. We believe that science and technology are the driving force behind the development of our nation, and our effort at the foundation has been to celebrate science and its unsung heroes. We also hope and strive that these heroes of, sci of science will inspire our young to follow in their footsteps, in their journey, and the example so that India will continue to be one of the world's most advanced nations. As Brian Greene has said, when kids look up to great scientists, the way they look up to musicians, actors, and sports figures, our civilization will jump to the next level. Friends, as you know, these awards were instituted in the year 1996 in the memory of visionary late Mr. H.K. Firoja, my dearest grandfather. These awards recognize those who have made original and outstanding contribution in their work in the field of science and technology. Over the years, the foundation has honored some of the most distinguished scientists and technocrats in the country, whose enormous contributions have set up and surpassed new boundaries in many fields, like space and environmental sciences, to medical sciences, to agriculture, and to engineering. Our eminent awardees include many amazing personalities of science, including Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Dr. K. Kasturi Rangan, Professor M.M. Sharma, Professor Yashpal, Professor Siena Rao, Professor Ashok Sen, Dr. Obed Siddiqui, Dr. K. Sivan, and the list continues to be star-studded. The titles our awardees carry, like Bharat Ratna, Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan, Royal Fellows, are all inspiring. But the awardees themselves have humbled us with their simplicity, their humility, and dedication to the nation. These awards have acquired national stature and prestige and are cherished by the scientific community. The efforts of the HK Freudia Foundation through these awards, as I mentioned earlier, is to inspire the youth of the country to develop scientific spirit through creativity and innovation. We are proud, here, we are proud that today here, we are celebrating a milestone, the 25th year of these awards, and that makes this evening even that much more special. As we begin the celebrations, we would first like to deeply thank, acknowledge, and felicitate the eminent personalities of, personalities of India who have been at the part of the Foundation's Management Committee and the Awards Committee. We are grateful to them for contributing their precious time to this initiative and guiding us through the years. May I request now our gracious hosts, my father, Sri Arun Firodiaji, the chairman of Kinetic Group, and the founder of the HK Firodia Memorial Foundation, and Dr. Jayashri Firodiaji, my mother, a leading pediatrician of the country, to do us the honors. We will begin with the management committee members. Let's put our hands together for Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, Dr. K. H. Sancheti. He's a renowned orthopedic surgeon, founder director of the Sancheti Hospital, and a fellow Royal College of Surgeons. Thank you, sir, for being with us. We also welcome Padmushri Padma Bhushan Shri Patap Pavaji, Chairman of the Sakal Media Group and Vice President of the World Association of Newspapers at Paris. Thank you, sir, for coming. We have here with us my favorite iron lady, Padmushri Mrs. Ms. Leela Punawadaji, who headed Swedish giants like Tetra Pak and Alpha Laval. She is also the chairperson of the Vida Punawala Foundation, which encourages young women to pursue further education. Let's welcome Sri Ravi Pandit. I am not sure he is here with us. Mr. Ravi Pandit, the chairman and group CEO of KPIT Cummins, has been a guiding spirit to these awards. We are very happy to have with us Dr. Deepak Shikarpur, an IT engineer of repute, 
past district governor of Rotary Club, Club and author of 46 books. Friends, as you know, we have been conducting science quiz for students for the last three years at the foundation, which has been his brainchild to promote interaction of young students with our scientists. Let's welcome Professor B.B. Abuja, the director of COIP, the Top Notch Engineering College of India. Thank you, sir, for guiding us. We also have with us Dr. K.C. Mohite, who is our advisor. He is the ex dean of science faculty at the Savitri Bai Phule University. We wholeheartedly welcome Dr. Rajiv Yaronekar, the principal director of Symbiosis Society and a very committed member to the health, promoting health in our country. Thank you for being with us. And please convey our regards to Dr. Vidya as well. We acknowledge Professor Amitav Malik, eminent technologist who could not be here with us today but has been a part of our management committee. Thank you very much to all the management committee members. We thank you for your support. Friends, now I would like to request our host to welcome our distinguished awards committee members whose contribution has been immense to this foundation. They are great personalities and heroes of science themselves who have made India proud through their work and contribution. I must say that it is only with their passion, their dedication and expertise that this foundation and the awards have been successful in identifying our eminent awardees. Please put your hands together for the amazing Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, Dr. R.A. Marshalkar, an eminent scientist and former DGCSIR who has been the guiding force for the awards. He has been the president of Global Research Alliance and also as the chairperson of Pune International Center, he has put Pune on the global map. Thank you, sir, for everything. I'm also deeply honored to welcome Padma Shri Padma Bhushan, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar, director of ETH and Dishnet and creator of India's first Param Supercomputer. Is sir present with us? He has been a great support to us through the awards committee. We would like to also acknowledge the contribution of our awards committee member, Padma Bibhushan Dr. Anil Kakodkar, the President of National Ac Academy of Sciences of India and Chairman of the Rajiv Gandhi Science and Technology Foundation. He could not be present with us here this evening. I would now request our host to welcome the awardees, the special heroes of this evening and pride of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening is all about Nari Shakti as today we have the two most distinguished scientists, women scientists, as our awardees. Please put your hands together as we welcome our Vigyan Bhushan awardee, Dr. Tessie Thomas, FNAE, a distinguished scientist and director, of, director general of DRDO in aeronautical systems. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. I also take pleasure in welcoming retired Commodore Indian Navy, Saroj Kumar Patel, husband of Dr. Tessie Thomas. Good evening, sir. Thank you for coming. It is our privilege to welcome our Vigyan Ratna awardee, Professor Gagandeep Kang, FNA, FASC, FRS, Professor Christian Medical College, Vellore, the first Indian woman scientist to receive FRS for the first time in the history of 360 years. We are indeed privileged to have her with us this evening. Friends, I can assure you that you will be just as amazed and awestruck with the contribution and achievements of our awardees as I am. We are privileged to have both of you with us this evening, ma'am, and we welcome you and your family members. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with a huge thundering round of applause our most distinguished and illustrious chief guest for this evening, and also the winner of the HK Froda Lifetime Achievement Award, Dr. Kiran Muzumdar Shaw. <laughs> Executive Chairperson and Founder of Biocon Group, she is a pioneering biotech entrepreneur, a healthcare visionary, a global influencer, and a passionate philanthropist. And winner of the most prestigious Padma Shri Padma Bhushan of honors. She has made the nation proud. And this evening, we are deeply grateful to her for accepting our invitation and to, for being here with us this, on, on this occasion. May I now request our award committee members, our awardees, and the chief guest to please come on the dais. May I request our host to kindly lead the dignitaries on the stage, please. Friends, 
This is the century of women. And today's glorious evening, adorned with these women achievers, is a true testament to that. Isn't it iconic today that world's leading women bio-entrepreneur is the chief guest to honor the vaccine godmother of India and the missile woman of India? Let's give them a big round of applause. As we now begin the award ceremony, I am proud to present to you my dear father, Chairman of the Kinetic Group, the founder of HK Firodia Foundation, Sri Arun Firodia Ji. He is a visionary who spearheaded automotive revolution in our country with much loved products like the Kinetic Luna and the Kinetic Honda. These innovations created by him have carved out, carved out a permanent space in the nation's heart. He is a pioneering industrialist a social activist and a philanthropist. For his outstanding contributions to automotive technology and innovation in the automotive sector, he has been honored with the prestigious Padma Shri in 2012. Please put your hands together as we welcome him, welcome him to deliver his address. Dr. Kiran Muzumdar Shah, Dr. Professor Gagandeep Kang, Dr. Tacey Thomas, our own Dr. Marshall Kerr, welcome to this great festival of science when we are felicitating three great women who are icons of science, their monumental contribution to science and innovation. This is indeed our tribute to Nari Shakti. They also prove that gender does not matter. You work as a scientist, not as a woman. We have Dr. Kiran Shah as our chief guest and Lifetime Achievement Award winner. It's a pleasant co coincidence that both of us share the same birthday, 23rd March. Although, I'm ten <laughs> Although she's 10 years younger than me. You might have seen the Kon Banega Karodhupati episode where a question was asked. Who was the person who made pepin from papaya? And correct answer is Dr. Muzumdar Shah. That was a 50 lakh question. Dr. Gagandeep Kang, the vaccine woman, she has a distinction of being the first woman scientist to have been, to have been elected as FRS. Indian woman scientists to have become FRS in 360 years of history. <laughs> Dr. Tacey Thomas, the missile woman, the first every woman scientist, first ever every woman scientist to have headed a missile program of DRDO. I am proud to say that she got her Emmy from Savitri Bhai Phule University. and worked under late APJ Abdul Kalam. We all know post-COVID that innovation has become a big challenge. Healthcare sector got a big boost to provide medicines, vaccines, kits, masks, ventilators, etc. And India harnessed all kinds of resources and be ready 
that any pandemic may come, we will have our vaccine, we will be prepared. No wonder that we are able to vaccinate 2 billion people. We have to work on the Gandhian philosophy of getting more from less, for more people. Science must solve technology, must transform and must innovate. The new normal has opened opportunities in every sector, from automobile to farming to manufacturing. IT plays a big role in the field of AI and machine learning, robotics. As our own Dr. Mashelkar puts it, it's time we go for pole vaulting, not leapfrogging. I also remember the words of my father. Many people dream and ask why. I also dream, but ask why not. With our drive for making India, making India Atmanirbhar, our mind is, mindset is also changing to become globally competitive. I am confident and look, look forward to our youth will take up the challenge of becoming job giver than job, says, job, job seeker. I am sure they will rise to this call. Thank you. Thank you, Dad, for your direction and for being a pioneer, not only in business, but in your thoughts and actions in all that you do. Friends, my dear grandfather, on whose memory these awards have been instituted, was a diehard believer that only science and technology can, with only science and technology, can our nation and mankind achieve true progress. As a nationalist, a technocrat, a curious engineer and entrepreneur, he dedicated his entire life to change the world that we live in for better, with science and innovation at its heart. Let me share a personal memory with all of you. When my grandfather was ailing in 1995, he told me in his typical straightforward frank speak way that beta, I know I won't be around much longer now and in a way I'm okay with that because I've had a fulfilling life. But in a way, I'm a little sad because I will not be around to witness the amazing scientific progress mankind is going to achieve in the next decade. I think computers and IT will change our lives and the world will come much closer. Progress in biotech and medicine will be transformational. And I'm sure, he said, man will reach Mars. He had this amazing childlike enthusiasm for science and technology. Here today, we are proud to present you a small film on the multifaceted H.K. Firodiyaji that aims to capture his purposeful, positive, honest, and human personality. May we have the film, please? Mark of a Doen is not in just what he says, but also what he does. Many a great personalities have made a mark through their words and deeds. For them, speech has to be followed by exemplary work for a greater good. And one name from our very Pune stands tall in this light. Hastimal Kundanmal Firodia, the Doen of Indian automobile industry is a prime example of someone who spoke about making a change and followed suit. Born on October 28, 1919 in Ahmednagar, HK, as is fondly called, got the call for service for the nation from his family. आणि त्याच्यामुळं आम्ही जेव्हा शाळेत होतो तेव्हा चळवळ करत होतो प्रवास फाया करत होतो परंतु शाळेच्या अभ्यासात कधी गल्लत केली नाही एज्युकेशन प्लेड अ बिग रोल इन एच के पाथ टू थिंक बिग आफ्टर अ बॅचलर ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग इन मेकॅनिकल अँड इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजिनिअरिंग फ्रॉम सी ओ ई पी ही वेंट टू द यू एस ए फॉर फर्दर स्टडीज इन नाईन्टीन 
at Syracuse University. But instead of the MBA program he wanted to go for, HK was given admission in the master's course for industrial engineering. This change helped his efforts to industrialize India in automobiles. So this is a Balkud Hotel. त्या बाळकडून गावाळकडून कधीही अशी शंका सुद्धा आली नाही म्हणाल की आपण अमेरिकेत राहावं शिक्षण संपल्याबरोबर दुसऱ्या दिवशी मी अमेरिकेवरून प्रयाण करून हिंदुस्थानात आलो याचं जे शिक्षण मिळालं आणि खूप काम करता आलं त्याचा मला पुढं जेव्हा आम्ही स्वतःचे कारखाने निर्माण केले तिचं खूप फायदा झाला एच के इज वर्किंग स्टाईल नॉट ओनली मेन टेकिंग लास्टिंग डिसिजन बट ऑल्सो मेकिंग शुअर ही गेट्स डाऊन टू बेसिक्स दॅट इज बी ॲट द वर्कशॉप्स विथ हिज वर्कर्स His scheme was to make good quality automobiles within people's reach. Some of the automobile successes he brought to India were mopeds, rickshaws, matadors, tempo travelers and the well-renowned Kinetic Honda. Maji ashi dharna hai ki ja bhumit apan dhan yash kirti sampan ke liye hai ja bhumi se karun phedlo pahije manun ja तऱ्हेने आम्हाला मदत करता येईल पैशाने श्रमाने बुद्धीनं जी करता येईल ती करायचा प्रयत्न करतो सामाजिक आणि आर्थिक जीवनात मी तीन सूत्राचा अवलंबन केला आहे ते मराठीत साथ चांगलं सांगता येतं एक सचोटी कसोटी आणि हतोटी आता सचोटीचा अर्थ आपण काय घेतो ज्या धंद्यात माझं प्राविण्य आहे चार्ट अक चार्ट अकाउंटंट आहे वकील आहे इंजिनियर आहे मला कोणी जर मत विचार विचारलं मला जे वाटतं मी सांगितलं पाहिजे सरकारला जे पाहिजे ते उत्तर द्यायला नाही पाहिजे ह्याला मी धंद्याची सचोटी म्हणतो आणि कसोटी म्हणजे आता इंग्लिशमध्ये आम्ही एक्सलन्स म्हणतो आणि तिसरी गोष्ट म्हणजे हातोटी ज्याला इंग्लिशमध्ये एच आर डी ह्युमन रिसोर्स डेव्हलपमेंट म्हणतात पण हातोटी हा शब्द इतका ॲप्रोप्रिएट आहे हातोटी म्हणजे काय की तुमचे जे कर्मचारी लोक आहेत त्या कर्मचारी लोकांच्या त्यांना कसं हाताळायचं त्याची जी हातोटी आहे ती जर तुम्ही आत्मसात केली तर तुम्ही सक्सेस तुमच्या हातात आलेला आहे असं जाता येईल कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव्हनेस अँड मेकिंग क्विक बट लास्टिंग डिसिजन विद अ व्हेरी फीचर्स दॅट मेड एच के अ बिझनेसमॅन पार एक्सलन्स एज नेव्हर बार्ड हिम फ्रॉम कनेक्टिंग विथ अदर कंपनीज फॉर आयडियाज हिज अफेक्शनेट नेचर अँड ह्युमिलिटी made hk firodia popular with people from all backgrounds hk believed in what he said one of the places to receive his wholehearted support was in kherwadi swapnabhumi it is indeed a dreamland which flowered under the guidance of hk firodia to make lives of women girls and children something to be proud of they are given every aid possible to lift themselves above all odds A busy schedule had never stopped him from being with his family and sharing all the joys but also give his likes a certain channeling indeed we call this living life to the fullest death cannot kill a person's thoughts and impact on others hastimal kundanmal firodia he lives amidst us through his views work and his main ways
This film leaves me teary-eyed every year for the last 25 years. Indeed, H.K. Froyda was a kindest, one in a billion soul and an extraordinary person. As we move ahead, I'm happy to share with you that Dr. Vijay Bhatkar has joined us, our eminent award committee member, and I request him to join us on the stage, please, sir. Please join us on the dais. As I call upon our next speaker, Dr. Raghunath Mashelkar, to deliver his address on the topic of women icons of science, I would like to share with all of you another facet of H.K. Froyaj's life. And I think looking at today's gathering, welcome, sir. I think looking at today's gathering and the mood, this would be the right occasion for me to share with you that he was also a great supporter of women power or Nari Shakti throughout his life. He had an intercaste marriage in 1940s and encouraged my grandmother, who was also a very strong and independent-minded lady herself, to participate in India's freedom struggle as a women activist leader. He also encouraged and supported her to complete her education after marriage. My mother came into our family also as an intercaste love marriage in the 60s. And I've always seen him not only support her, but also respect her as a doctor. He encouraged me and gave me so much self-confidence to pursue my own dreams of being an industrialist. He was also a pioneer in supporting women, Jain Sadhvis, in their struggle to achieve the same status as a male counterpart. And the list goes on and on. I believe that such men like him are at the heart of creating social change where deserving women get more opportunities, strength, and confidence to reach their true potential. And this, is also helps, this also helps in creating great women icons. On that note, I would now like to request, and we will have the honor of listening to the words of one of the finest brains of our nation. I will not be exaggerating if I call him the pride of the nation. He's the renowned Dr. Raghunath Mashelkar. I request him to share his views on the men icons of science. Please put your hands together as we welcome Dr. Mashelkar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our most uh, gracious host this evening, Arun Firodia and uh, Jayashri Firodia, our most beloved chief guest of uh, today's function, Dr. Kiran Muzumdar Shah. Also, the Lifetime Achievement Award winner this evening. Uh, our proud award winners, Dr. Kagandip Kang, Dr. Tesi Thomas, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar, distinguished invitees, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let me extend a very warm uh, welcome to you this evening, a very special evening an evening of celebration of achievements of these amazing scientists, technologists, amazing in the way they have conquered terrains and reached heights which are incredible as you will see as we uh, move along. This is also a special evening because uh, this is the Silver Jubilee year of the award, 25 years of long journey, a glorious uh, journey. In fact, I can say that uh, we can look back at our glorious journey with great pride. I have been involved right from 1996 uh, in these awards in various capacities, including, can you believe it? I don't mind disclosing to you. So far, there have been 50 plus life science, uh, lifetime achievement awardees, so around 55, and I have written the citation for each one of these, 55. <laughs> so deeply am I engaged in these awards. I think to begin with, let us remember H.K. Firodia. He was not only a doyen of industry, but a great human being with great values. You heard him carefully. 
He talked about kasoti, which is excellence. He says, no matter what you do, keep uncompromising excellence, a great value. The second is hatoti, human relations, because he believed that people is the real capital, not money, but the people. And the third one, sachoti, he believed that not only should you be non-corrupt, but you should express your opinion, and as you heard him, not necessarily what the government wants to tell you. It's very interesting, by the way. And therefore, when we celebrate 19, I mean, 75 years of India's independence, we look at that one freedom, not just the political freedom, but the freedom to speak, and that's what he was uh, actually emphasizing. I think for building this nation, these three are very important, Kasoti, Atoti, and Sajuti. Uh, as I said, looking back at these 25 years, if you look at all the 55 personalities that were honored, they are the creators of India's modern science and technology. They are the creators of the nation. As uh, you saw, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam uh, and Dr. Vijay Bhatkar were the first uh, awardees. Dr. Vijay Bhatkar is here. The second were uh, Professor C.N.R. Rao and Dr. Anil Kakodkar. You know, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam became a Bharat Ratna. Professor C.N.R. Rao became a Bharat Ratna. And it is interesting, in the first five years, among the ten awardees, we had two Bharat Ratnas and four, uh, five Padma Vibhushans. Can you just imagine that? In fact, uh, these awards, I must tell uh, all the uh, three iconic figures sitting here, has a miraz touch, by the way. You get this award and something happens to you. <laughs> so don't be surprised if in these three personalities you will see the future of Bharat Rattas and Padma Vibhushans and so on and so forth. <laughs> That's the magic of this award. I, a special word about uh, today's award is, uh, you know, uh, this is the... I mean, we were waiting for this uh, Silver Jubilee celebration to do it in a special way by honoring these iconic uh, women scientists. Uh, and they're all uh, iconic, towering figures. So first of all, I want to thank them because by accepting this honor, they honored our award itself and uh, raised the prestige of this uh, award. Uh, let me say a few words with each one of them because when I talk about women scientists, they are the iconic figures who become role models for all of us. Uh, first, uh, Gagandip Kang. I mean, people call her vaccine woman of India, and Gagandip, uh, some call you vaccine grandmother of India. So that, that, there she is, as a matter of fact. You know, uh, we have Tessie Thomas, the missile woman of India, as was discussed, and Kiran Muzundar Shaw. Uh, she is the first bio technopreneur to do IPO, but even much beyond that. So these are all three very, very special. You know, coming back to Gagandip Kang, it was mentioned twice that uh, she's the first woman scientist to become fellow of Royal Society in 360 years. I see a lot of young people here, so I must tell them what is FRS. And in order to explain that, let me tell you about something that I had tweeted recently when uh, uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II passed away. 350 years of FRS was, uh, I mean, the Royal Society was celebrated. And as a fellow of Royal Society, I was also invited. I went there, I remember. Lord Martin Rees was uh, the president. And as uh, Her Majesty came along, he introduced me to her. So she looked at me and said, oh, you came all the way from India to attend this function? So you value it uh, very much, it looks like. I said, yes. And then I told her a story that when I became FRS in 1998, Sir Eric Sykes, who was a fellow of Rajasthan said, had written to me, enjoy this FRS because now there are only two greater things that can happen to you in your life. One is Nobel Prize, and second is death. One is sure, and another one is uncertain. <laughs> and I, 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 I remember it was uh, uh, sort of amazing. And by the way, just as an aside, I must tell you that then uh, Her Majesty went around the exhibition, 
and one girl was explaining to her this algae to oil how you capture a photon and convert it into proton and then the lipid and the oil and you know the kind of deep questions she asked i must say i was amazed as a matter of fact i was sort of uh, uh, listening it is very interesting we look at monarchs and we look at them in a particular way but what she asked me i, I asked her was incredible anyway so that is gagandhi for you and tacy thomas as we heard the first ever women scientist to head uh, uh, missile project uh, she is rightly called agni putri by the way all right because the agni missiles are right uh, sort of up there and when we talk about atmanirbharta in defense she has played such a role in fact when i was looking at three of you i was reminded of saraswati lakshmi and durga how <laughs> did you understand why i am saying that so this is this is why this stage is incredible and a few words about kiran we go along with kiran huh when she was that young i remember her coming to ncl and from there uh, it was an incredible uh, thing you know today we talk about startups she did a startup in late 80s as a matter of fact when india was not even a starting up country all right venture capital didn't exist and today we talk about it in a different way because 2016 17 until that time we had one unicorn one unicorn for our young uh, 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 sort of uh, students here is a market capitalization of 1 billion dollar which is 100 crore by the way okay until 2016 17 we had just one unicorn every year and in 2021 we are almost one unicorn not in a year but per week 42 42 not 52 so i said almost basically but that is the case now at that point in time so i think you must see the inspiration that i always say that scarcity and aspiration is a deadly combination you you create miracles and kiran actually did that she started uh, with an initial capital of only 10000 rupees the advert uh, the challenge that she had for example biotech was a new field so nobody would fund it and women as a woman she faced so many uh, challenges maybe it will come up uh, uh, in the film and she uh, started production with two uh, tractor mechanics unskilled labor all right and it was an incredible and in fire <laughs> lack of uh, uninterrupted power inferior quality life and you know within that what she did our prime minister says make in india for the world right under those conditions she created enzymes which were exported to united states of america <laughs> so therefore all that i would say is that i have been asked to talk about women scientists and look back on the 25 years i would say these are the icons these should be the role models for all of us not just for girls men also for me by the way they are icons they are role models so i think this stage in the last 25 years to me is very 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 special i feel privileged to be sitting on the same stage where these three iconic figures are sitting thank you very much thank you so much dr mashalkar for that treat it's no wonder that we love you so much all of india loves you thank you so much he also very kindly said that it is the luck of the hk frode awards through which our award is go on to achieve even greater heights and huge uh, accolades like bharat ratna i'm very happy for him to have said that but the truth i think it is his and dr bhatkar's and dr kakorskar's passion for these awards and their sincere support to these awards that they are identifying the awardees who are genuinely deserving of the award and of greater accolades so we'll thank you very much for that thank you <laughs> friends now we are nearing the moment of honoring these great achievers who have achieved 
a lot, made original and outstanding contributions in their fields. Let me say here, highlight here, that these women achievers here are not just here today because they are women in science. As you will see, they are very much here deserving this award because they are great scientists. They are not just women icons, which they are for sure, but they are truly icons of science and technology par excellence in our country. For each of these awards, we will now begin by reading the citation, then the actual presentation of the awards at the hands of our August chief guest, and finally the much awaited speech of the awardees. It is my pleasure now to, to begin the award presentation ceremony and to announce that we will now be presenting the Vigyan Bhushan Award here today to Dr. Tessi Thomas, the Distinguished Scientist and Director General Aeronautical Systems of DRDO. First ever woman to, re, to head the ambitious Agni Missile Project, a scientist par excellence, and as Dr. Mashalkar said, she has made amazing contributions in making our country truly Atmanirbhar in the defense sector. Before we honor Dr. Tessie Thomas with the Vigyan Bhushan Award, the citation will be read in her honor. I request Rishali Raut to do the honors and read the citation. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. This for Dr. Tessie Thomas, Distinguished Scientist, DG Aeronautical Systems. We applaud you as the first ever woman scientist to head a missile project at DRDO. You have provided bold and visionary leadership for successful development of Agni 1 to 4 range of missiles. This is the first time India developed intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads over long range of more than 4,000 kilometers. Your leadership in development of solid propellant systems was critical for the re-entry of missiles, withstanding great velocity and very high temperatures over 3,000 degrees centigrade. You have been spearheading development of crucial guidance control systems, inertial navigation and trajectory simulation, which have been flight tested and proven. You have been recipients of several Women Achiever Awards at a national level, but the best is being your held as the Missile Woman of India. Indeed, you have become a role model for women scientists in India, showing that gender does not matter, only merit matters. In deep appreciation of your great contributions in making our country Atmanirbhar in the defense sector, we, the members of HK Firodia Memorial Foundation, have a great honor and privilege to confer on you the Vignan Bhushan Award today on September 22, 2022. For HK Firodia Memorial Foundation, Dr. Ari Mashelkar, Dr. V.P. Bhatkar, Dr. Anil Kakotkar, and Sri Arun Firodia, Managing Trustee. Let's give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. May I now request our chief guest, Dr. Kiran Ji Mujandar Shaw, to please do us the honors and present the prestigious HK Firodia Vigyan Bhushan Award to Dr. Tessie Thomas. I request our hosts and our awards committee members, Dr. Mashalkar and Dr. Bhatkar, to kindly join the dais. An amazing moment for all present here, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as the Vigyan Bhushan Award is being presented to Dr. Tessie Thomas for her revolutionary work in the field of aeronautical systems and her contribution in the field of defense. Thank you very much, Dr. Kiran Shah. Thank you so much. Thank you all. I would now like to request Dr. Tessie Thomas to grace her with her thoughts on my journey 
on Agni missiles. I am so looking forward to hearing her speech. Please, ma'am. Very respected Dr. Arun Firodia, Madam Jayashri Firodia, Dr. R. M. Ashelkar, Dr. Vijay Badkar, today's Chief of Guest, from whom I was deeply honored to receive the award, Dr. Kiran Shah, Dr. Gagandeep Kang, and all the dignitaries present of the dais and all members present here, a very good evening to all of you. It's really a proud moment for me to receive this HK Friyudhya Foundation Award for the 25th year. And proud again and honored and humbled to receive the award um, along with women icons of India. I take this opportunity to thank all the jury members whom we mentioned here for selecting me for this award. Now coming to my journey of more than 36 years in missile and aerospace systems. Uh, from school days, I was really interested in mathematics and science. I think that gave me an opportunity to go for my engineering in electrical engineering from Government Engineering College, Trichur followed by the MTech program in guided missiles. That's again from this very city, Pune. I graduated, post-graduated from Pune University, uh, from DIT, the Defense Institute of Armament Technology, where I'd learned about the basic science of missile and its technology. And then, in, way back in 1988, I went and joined as a scientist B, uh, the junior scientist at uh, Hyderabad Missile Laboratory, where I was so fortunate that Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was the director. He is a motivator, inspirer, and one who allows even the junior most scientist to learn and be a part of the working group. So I'm fortunate to get the opportunity to work from the very beginning. There are few of my colleagues are also sitting here in the crowd who has also in this journey of 30 years, 35 years, they were also along with me, where we were asked to develop systems of first of its kind. And first 10 to 15 years, we were not even telling that we are working for Agni missiles. We have been instructed not to talk about Agni, the name itself, outside. So when you travel from Pune to Kerala, I belong from Kerala, in the train somebody happens to just a friendly inquiry, what do you work? I'm only a scientist, nothing more but that it cannot be relieved what you are working on. So that is the way things were done because it was a requirement for the nation because it was, we were on MTCR challenges and none of the systems will be given or even the materials, uh, even the uh, starting from different alloys of steel, nothing was given and we were to work. And I started my journey working for this within six months like the pressure started for developing 
systems like this and our working hours started uh, from 9 to 5 I was never been able to and uh, we were working till late hours and I found it very difficult even uh, to commute I knew cycling so cycle was one choice to buy and then uh, my brother said go for a Luna that was uh, uh, way back in 88 but then he gave me an option today I mean then 1988 there was a lot of advertisement in the newspaper showing kinetic Honda with young beautiful girls sitting with a helmet and very nicely I still remember the photograph of that in the uh, newspaper which really triggered me. I said, why not I go for a Kinetic Honda? Why should I go for Luna? So he encouraged because he is again a, a boy who feels, chalo, chalo, it is, it's an opportunity. So without knowing driving, I purchased Kinetic Honda, then learned and throughout this 33 years when I was in Hyderabad, I'm a user of uh, Kinetic Honda. It has paid a uh, marvelous role in my career because uh, I stayed almost 15-20 kilometers away but I used to get a warning saying that your speed has to be limited because I <laughs> fly across <laughs> the roads which was free now it is not so and uh, I just wanted to mention that otherwise the journey of challenge from the missile side it was to do with the technologies for the first time and Agni 1, uh, we started with Agni 2, where we had a maneuvering re-entry and two-stage rocket motor, where we used uh, um, metallic uh, steels, uh, alloy of 15 CDV6 steels. And then came by Agni 3, we switched over to the, for the rocket motor casing, switched over to the maraging steel, which gives much be weight benefit, maybe 20 percent. but world across with Agni 3 where, with a launch mass of 50 ton we were able to go only up to 3000 kilometers that is where after working for 20 years we were feeling that we have not reached to the global standards then I was designated as Agni 4 project director and was asked initially you can make changes in Agni 2 as a stage 1 motor and get a benefit of, uh, Agni 2 was for 2000, get a benefit of 2000 to 2500 because that was a requirement at point of time. But then I started the configuration design going through. I realized that just by uh, changing the motor, then the control systems were complex. Uh, so aerodynamic control to flex nozzle control were suggested. So no nozzle gets fitted in that uh, diameter. So I had to go for a uh, total redesign as a configuration from tip of the missile to bottom of the missile I had gone through reconfiguring, redesigning and uh, by the end of the story of four or five years effort with a launch mass of 22 ton which is less than half the weight of Agni 3, we could get a range capability of 4,000 kilometers. So where we switched over to the challenging composite rocket motor technology for the rocket casing. Weight reduction benefit was of the order of 40 percent and more. When I say weight reduction, 1 kg if I carry extra in the missile. I will lose the range by four to five kilometers. So that is the type of importance of, we were uh, weighing things in milligram and putting uh, when we are to configure. So that is that was a challenge. And we made a, one stage of uh, the Agni 4 as composite rocket motor casing and the benefit had come. Then switched over, this technology was then adapted for Agni 5. And I had a basic, uh, uh, responsibility of designing the guidance law for the solid state rocket motors. Liquid uh, motors, it was easy to terminate the thrust, like either switch off the fuel or the oxidizer, we can uh, terminate the thrust and get the required velocity. But it was not easy 
uh, for with a solid rocket motor where in which uh, the it burns like a, a cigarette burning from one end to the other the total energy comes in that so that is where i could be a, uh, the designer of uh, energy management guidance scheme for all solid propellant systems and by the time moved from agni 2 agni 1 agni 3 then agni 4 and agni 5 we had three stages of rocket motors where in which all the three rocket motors were to be combined and designed the guidance law the energy variation is that either i can strike a 2500 km or a 5000 km so double the energy constraint and i have to do the energy management on board and these are like systems where we give the launch point coordinates and target point coordinates it is supposed to go and hit so overall that type of uh, technology was to be developed and agni 5 i could uh, uh, design and develop this agni uh, guidance law for three stage and the mission designer for agni 5 also so that was my journey as uh, missiles then uh, way back in 2018 Uh, and i headed the uh, laboratory of missiles for all strategic systems and then asked to move as with my promotion i had to move to bangalore for as aeronautical D- director general for aeronautical systems where i was thinking missile is the greatest technology with that you know everything but when i went to aeronautical systems i realized there are technologies still more Uh, uh difficult to understand and difficult to implement where in which we need to have very lot of predictive algorithms like fighter aircrafts the lca and uh, its variants the medium range is on uh, design now and the unmanned aerial vehicles like i talk about drones which are of military capacity that is almost uh, drones of an aircraft size so such uh, type of design and what type of electronics and uh, uh, artificial intelligence surveillance and tracking and uh, pilotless taking the journey of uh, vehicle on a weapon strike so these were technologies again an upper upper end technologies first of its kind again deeply thankful to drdo in giving me the opportunity to work on these great technologies and my mother always used to say there's only life only one life in your whole life and this is the only life and you should take you should see challenges as opportunities take each challenge as opportunity and work for it and i have today i must express my love and regards to my mother's brother and wife and my mother's sister even they are old enough but they are here in the audience to come and see and bless me in this event i take this opportunity once again to thank hk firodia foundation and dr uh, arun uh, firodia and all the members in giving me this great honor thank you i'll cherish throughout my life thank you thank you so much dr tessie thomas what an inspirational journey i think when we think about war weaponry and missiles very rarely we think about women i think she's a living example that women can excel in any field and i hope that her speech will inspire the young girls who are here today to pursue science as their careers and look at even completely um, unusual areas like defense technology and i also hope that the parents and grandparents here will encourage their daughters and granddaughters to become like her so thank you very much ma'am we will now have the honor of presenting one of india's dazzling stars of science and entrepreneurship dr kiran mozumdar shah with the lifetime achievement award friends the theme of 
theme of HK for the awards for 2022 is innovation for global competition. And I think our chief guest and lifetime achievement awardee, Dr. Shaw, has demonstrated this through her work. As a pioneer in India's biotech industry, with a passion for innovation, she has truly put India on the global map in the field of science and biotechnology. From very early in her journey, she has looked at global markets as the opportunity to make a mark. And today I have learned that more than 75% of her business is focused on exports. That's true global competitiveness in a very competitive, difficult industry that she participates in. We are very proud of you, ma'am, for this. She's certainly a role model for all women entrepreneurs, me included. When I started my new electric venture within Kinetic Group called Kinetic Green, there were three role models who inspired me. My grandfather, whose entrepreneurial spirit I'm fortunate to be touched by. My father, who encouraged me to believe that the future is green and electric and supported me wholeheartedly. And Kiranji, who was an example ahead of me of courage, innovation, and global ambition. She truly is the most deserving of this Lifetime Achievement Award. I would now like to invite Dr. Mashelkar to formally introduce our awardee and our chief guest, Dr. Kiran Muzindar Shaw. Thank you. <clears throat> Just as uh, it has been a practice for me to write the citations, it has been a practice also to introduce the chief guest. So, I like to introduce uh, Kiran. Of course, a lot of that one wants to say formally has been written in the citation, which will be read separately. So, I'm not going to repeat anything that is written in the citation. Kiran, that's how I feel about you. That's what I'm going to say. I think uh, there are five quick points I'd like to make about Kiran. What makes her not just special, but very, very, very special. First is, of course, uh, her market capitalization overall is $7 billion. She has 15,000 uh, uh, employees. Uh, but she's a brilliant example of converting knowledge into wealth, Saraswati to Lakshmi. You know, it's a brilliant uh, uh, sort of example. And also that of not just making in India as assembled in India, but invent in India and for the world. So that's the first thing that distinguishes her. The second is uh, her critical thinking and risk taking. And you know, there is a book, How Kiran Mazumdar Shaw Fermented Biocon. This is by R. Gopal Krishnan and Sushmita Srivastava. So I can't do better than re uh, uh, sort of read out uh, one of her statements when it comes to critical thinking for managing risk. She says, my success lies not in doing this or that, it is about making choices. The choices were high risk choices which were fundamental to my entrepreneurial inclination. Taking a plain risk by a leap of faith does not work for me. My strength is to analyze the risk, manage it and navigate it. I was keen to be a differentiator and a path breaker. So that's the second point about her. The third is, uh, she has said that rather than valuation, I believe in value creation. You know, there is a lot of craze about valuation and you can see some crazy valuations today that are uh, everyday uh, headlines. But she believes in value creation and uh, that too by affordable innovation. In fact, one of her wonderful statements, I listened to her speech, where she said that rather than creating a billion dollars, I like to serve a billion people. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> so that's the uh, third. The fourth is, uh, she meets my definition of an innovator. Innovator is one who does not know it cannot be done. Also, innovator is one who sees what everyone else sees, but thinks of what nobody else thinks. And she has demonstrated again and again. You know, we talk about Atmanirbhar Bharat, but Atmanirbhar Bharat has to be with Atma Vishwas, that self-confidence. And if you read this entire book, it's all about self-confidence. It is all about meeting that uh, sort of innovation. In fact, there is a classic story of her attending a conference in US where she heard a Cuban scientist and she saw the breakthrough. Nobody was able to see that. And she went, met her, 
and there was a breakthrough head and uh, neck uh, sort of cancer molecule that they uh, created which was a huge success. So that ability uh, to spot what others are not able to see, that's her fourth. And the fifth, most important, she combines in an incredible way, not just innovation and passion, but compassion, empathy. I always say engineers without empathy are no engineers. Enormous empathy. Her philanthropic work has been tremendous and she has made a public statement about giving her wealth away for good causes and you will see some statement in the citation. So, it is like this, you know, there are two things when we talk about uh, uh, doing well and doing good. That means you make a lot of money and then you create a foundation, right? And through that you do good. She has done that. But also, doing well by doing good. Doing good itself is a business. So if you create drugs and other therapeutics, let us say, which are very affordable to the poorest of the poor, you are doing good as a business and she has excelled in both. So Kiran, I would say uh, just thank you for being what you are and for having done what you have done for our society, for the nation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mashalkar. May I now request Rushali to read the citation, please. Dr. Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, Executive Chairperson Biocon and founder of Biocon Group of Companies. The nation is proud of your monumental contributions as a global leader in biotechnology innovations and entrepreneurship. You are a role model for millions of our youth in showing how to become a global leader in technopreneurship with science-led innovation. You have many proud firsts to your credit, being the first Indian company to get US FDA approval to manufacture cholesterol-lowering molecule, as also being the manufacturer of the world's first orally consumed insulin. You are a recipient of numerous international awards and honors. You have been honored with the Order of Australia, Australia's highest civilian honor, the highest French distinction, Knight of the Legion Honor, and as also EY World Entrepreneur of the Year Award. The World Economic Forum has recognized you as a technology pioneer. You believe in the compassionate capitalism reflecting in your deep commitment to give back to the society. You were the first woman entrepreneur from India to join the Giving Plate, an initiative of Bill Gates Foundation committing to, the, to give majority of your wealth to philanthropic causes. A grateful nation has also felicitated you with the highest civilian awards of Padma Shri in 1999 and Padma Bhushan in 2005. In recognition of your long life achievement, magnificent contributions to the nation as a pioneering technopreneur, as a healthcare visionary, as a global influencer, and as a passionate philanthropist, we, the members of HK Firodia Memorial Foundation, have a great honor and privilege to confer on you the Lifetime Achievement Award today on September 22, 2022. For HK Firodia Memorial Foundation, Dr. R. A. Mashelkar, Dr. V. P. Bhatkar, Dr. Anil Kakotkar, and Sri Arun Finodia, Managing Trustee. Thank you, Vrishali. Friends, now for the golden moment of this evening, we at the HK Froya Foundation are privileged to bestow upon Dr. Kiran Muzundar Shah the Lifetime Achievement Award. May I request our hosts, Mr. and Mrs. Arun Firodia, Dr. Mashalkar, Dr. Bhatkar, and Dr. Muzundar Shah to kindly come on the dais. Sir, upon the stage, I may request you. I request our host, Mr. Arun Firodia, to do us the honors and present Dr. Muzundar Shah with the HK Firodia Lifetime Achievement Award. I think this occasion calls for a thunderous applause, my friends. Let's give them a big round of applause.
would now like to request Dr. Tessie Thomas and Dr. Khan to please join them on the desk for a group photo. This chronicles this precious moment, ladies and gentlemen. I think this calls for a standing ovation. These wonderful icons of science, give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, everyone. I now request Dr. Kiran Rajinda Shaw to deliver her address. We would love to know more her, from her on her topic of choice, the power of purpose of entrepreneurial spirit, entrepreneurial pursuit. I'm sorry. We're looking forward to hearing you, ma'am. The gracious host of this evening, Sri Arun Firodia Ji, Jai Sri Ji, my very dear friend Ramesh Mashelkar, Dr. Bhatkar, and of course my heroes, Gagandeep Kang and Tessie Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to specially call out my dear friend Leela Punawala. For me, this recognition, this award is certainly very humbling and I'm deeply honored and grateful to the Ferodia Foundation for the HK Ferodia Award. And I would like to dedicate this award to every entrepreneur in our country who is doing their bit for nation building. The notion of taking an idea to the market is daunting, yet exciting, aspirational, yet very challenging. And I sincerely believe that great nations are built by millions of entrepreneurial endeavors, both big and small, that unleash the potential of ideas fueling economic engines of growth with the power of entrepreneurial purpose. I call myself an accidental entrepreneur because I embarked on a journey, an entrepreneurial journey that was fairly pioneering in industrial biotechnology with absolutely no notion of ever starting my own business. I can honestly say that I've been guided by the North Star of business purpose in my entrepreneurial journey. And it is the passionate pursuit of business purpose that I believe has led to several successes in my entrepreneurial journey. I've realized that purpose is an evolving process which actually improves clarity of vision and the strength of conviction. And the power of purpose is fueled by an idea that is backed with both passion and conviction. So let me start at the very beginning. I founded my company Biocon in 1978, as you heard from Dr. Mashelkar, in a tiny garage with a simple idea of developing enzymes that could replace chemical processes and thereby reduce chemical pollution and build eco-friendly biosolutions. And by doing this, there was also an opportunity to reduce energy consumption. Fundamental to this idea was the spirit of research-driven scientific pursuit based on microbial fermentation that would yield innovative products and technologies that could green the planet. I must also share with you that when I started my company in 1978, as a woman scientist 
who had been spurned by industry in India only because I was a woman, I was determined to start a company that would foster a research and scientific driven culture where women scientists and both scientists and engineers of, all gen of both genders could actually find meaningful engagement. Because that was also the time of massive brain drain from this country. And I as an entrepreneur felt that if I could prevent the brain drain by providing exciting and meaningful employment opportunities for young scientists, both men and women, I thought that would be a good sense of purpose. And I'm excited and really pleased that today, 44 years later, 40% of our research scientists are women. I'm excited that we have the largest working talent pool of scientists and engineers in one campus. We have almost 12,000 scientists and engineers in our campus in Bangalore. So I think from that point of view, I feel that I have dreamt about this and I'm happy that I've realized part of this dream. And my whole journey of entrepreneurship has been guided by a sense of business purpose. So I wanted to create this whole notion of creating green businesses way back in the 80s and 90s, an idea ahead of its time, no doubt, because that was not the time of climate change or sustainability. But nevertheless, I felt it was an important purpose that I had to steer myself with. And I can tell you, as a group, as a group of scientists and engineers, we relentlessly pursued enzyme technologies that were eco-friendly and energy efficient. And I must say that we created several proprietary technologies and high-value intellectual property that generated an impressive portfolio of international patents. In fact, in 2007, when we finally divested our enzymes business, it was our scientific efforts which gave us a very lucrative return through the IP we had created. The next phase of my business purpose was initiated in 1998 when we decided to foray into fermentation-based pharmaceuticals and biopharmaceuticals. And this time we were driven by the ethos to deliver affordable access to essential medicines that were beyond the reach of most needy patients in India. In fact, I must admit that what really started me off was the huge inequity I found in our country where in the late 90s and the early part of the century, I realized that India was the, considered the diabetes capital of the world and patients who needed insulin could only afford animal insulins because recombinant human insulin was beyond the reach of most patients in our country. And I thought that was a traversity. And so I said to my colleagues, why don't we develop a recombinant human insulin based on one of our enzyme technologies? And that enzyme technology was derived from a very special yeast called Picia pastoris. And we actually developed recombinant human insulin very successfully and launched it in 2004 and disrupted the market. We forced down the price of imported insulin to one-tenth of what it was being sold at. And now, today, I don't think anyone has even heard of animal insulins. Today, every patient who needs insulins uh, in the country uses recombinant human insulin. So I really believe that, you know, we really played a very important role in disrupting the way insulin was delivered to the Indian market. And today, thanks to our efforts, 
we are supplying our insulins to over 80 countries in the world. I'm also very proud of the fact that we have a proprietary insulin technology globally and we also have the distinction of being the first and only company globally to get approval from US FDA for an interchangeable insulin glar gene. So I think what this demonstrates is the excellence that our scientists have demonstrated in their research, in their development, and of course, the manufacturing that goes alongside it. Simultaneously, what we also did was that we started looking at other biologics. And I realized the same was true of antibodies. My best friend needed an antibody which was Herceptin to treat breast cancer. She was a very, very successful professional, well-to-do professional, but even she had to sell her property to afford that treatment. And the same drug, Trastuzumab, is today available at a very affordable price point thanks to the efforts of our scientists. In every one of these cases, we have focused on affordable innovation, as you know, Professor Mashelka referred to. And in every one of this, our guiding North Star was affordable access. Affordable access to life-saving and essential medicines for patients anywhere and everywhere. Again, we are very proud that we were the first company to be approved by US FDA for biosimilar trastuzumab. So I think what we have demonstrated is that when you believe in your capabilities, when you believe in excellence, when you believe in science, anything is possible. And today as the world battles with health equity, we as a company have always tried to make a difference to global health and make a difference to health equity through affordable innovation and providing affordable access. Today I'm very proud that we have built world-class research capabilities and global manufacturing capabilities. One of the things that I realized as an entrepreneur was when you want to make global impact, you have to have global scale. And although it takes deep pockets to do that, if you don't create global scale, you cannot make global impact. That was another differentiator where I said, if we want to do it, we can't do it half-heartedly. We have to go for it. So today we have some of the largest facilities for making insulins and monoclonal antibodies. In fact, we rank amongst the top 20 biomanufacturing com companies in the world. Even in the case of insulins, today insulins is a heated debate even in a wealthy country like the US. And we as a company made a pledge just before the pandemic at the United Nations General Assembly that we would provide insulin at 10 cents per day to developing world patients. And we have partnered with many, many organizations to provide this affordable access. As an entrepreneur, I've always believed that our entrepreneurial endeavor must be embedded in empathy. And that is what will drive our business purpose as we evolve into our next phase of business purpose. I can't help but believe that the future will be about new age therapeutics that are predictive, precise, and personalized. And we aim to develop therapeutics wherein digital technologies will play a, an integral role in ensuring that patients receive personali personalized care with predictable and better outcomes. I feel extremely privileged and humbled to be recognized for this 
my lifetime efforts in steering my company Biocon as a responsible and empathetic biotech company which is driven by a sense of business purpose that aligns to what everyone talks about today, which is ESG, environment, sustainability, and social equity. Environmental sustainability, social equity, and ethical governance. Those are the tenets that I want everyone in my organization to live by. But above all, if we want to make our nation great, I think science is going, and engineering is going to play a very key role in our future. So I would like to conclude by thanking the Firola Foundation for recognizing me, for giving me this Lifetime Achievement Award. Of course, I know I still have many miles to go. So I would like to really thank all of you and thank all of you for you know, being here to see me receive it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. What an amazing, inspirational jo journey. A journey of passion, a journey of purpose, a journey of global ambition, and above all, a journey of perseverance. I would like to say here that, you know, our younger generation, the Gen Z as they're called, sometimes believe that success can come overnight. But I think the truth, as they say, is that the overnight success also took 15 years. So from the speech that we heard of Dr. Kiran Mujumdar Shah, she is today more than a $5 billion market cap company. And it, she has been working at for, for 44 years at it. So I think our younger generation must take this lesson home, that perseverance, purpose, passion are all required to create lasting successes. So we are really inspired by your speech, ma'am. We really thank you for being with us this evening. We would love for you to stay with us till the end of the event. But I believe at some point you may have to, you are staying. Okay, that's wonderful. So let's now move ahead to honor our most prestigious Vigyan Ratna awardee. This award is given to the most eminent scientist of the country every year in recognition of their original and exemplary contribution. Our Vigyan Ratna awardee this evening is Professor Gagandeep Kang, FNA, FASC, FRS Professor Christian Medical College, Vellore. As I said earlier, she is the first woman scientist to receive FRS for the first time in the history of 360 years. She has developed, <laughs> she has developed the rotavirus vaccine, saving millions of children worldwide. She has made such great contribution in research of vaccines enteric infectious diseases that she has earned the fame of being called the vaccine godmother of India. Now before we honor Professor Gagandip Kang with the Vigyan Ratna Award, I request Rishali to read the citation. Dr. Gagandip Kang, FNA, FNA, FASC, FRS, Professor Christian Medical College, Vellore. We salute you for being the first Indian woman scientist to receive the prestigious fellowship of Royal so Society, FRS, in 2019. Indeed, the first after the Royal Society was founded in 1660. This unique honor comes to you in recognition of your pioneering contributions in vaccines, enteric infectious diseases, newborn and child health and nutrition. Your influence on public health programs and policies in India has been massive. Amazingly, you have collaborated with 70 institutions in India to establish multi-site, multi-tiered surveillance systems that have impacted the national immunization program. Your path-breaking research in gastrointestinal diseases of children have led to the development of a vaccine against rotavirus, saving lives of millions of children world over. No wonder you have earned the fame of being the vaccine godmother. You have been honored with not only the fellowships of all the science academies in India, but also the prestigious fellowships of Faculty of Public Health and the Royal College of Pathology in the UK and the American Academy of Microbiology in the US. In appreciation of your most innovative and impactful contributions to the public health and medicine, we, 
The members of HK Firodia Memorial Foundation have a great honor and privilege to confer on you the Vignan Ratna Award today on September 22, 2022. For HK Firodia Memorial Foundation, Dr. R. A. Mashelkar, Dr. V. P. Patkar, Dr. Anil Kakotkar, and Sri Arun Firodia, Managing Trustee. What a physician scientist, ma'am. We are amazed with your work and your contribution to life sciences and health research in India and globally. We are truly fortunate to have you amongst us this evening. Friends, let's give a big round of applause as I humbly request our chief guest, Dr. Kiran Muzumdar Shah, our host and our award committee members to please come forward on the dais and I request Dr. Kiran Muzumdar Shah to please give away the prestigious HK Firodia Vigyan Ratna Award to Dr. Gagandeep Kaur. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I would now like to request Professor Kang to grace us with her thoughts on handling virus, viral infections. We met her this afternoon for a tea and we had so many questions for her about so many viruses which have been bothering the mankind for the last few years. We are really looking forward to her insightful thoughts. Thank you, ma'am. So, Shri Arun Firodia, Dr. J. Shri Firodia, Dr. Mashilkar, Dr. Bhatkar, Kiran, Tessie, everybody here, thank you so much for the honor that I've just received. I thought I would do my lecture a little bit differently uh, with the idea that uh, while I was asked to talk about handling viruses, um, I wanted to communicate with the, all of you that everybody in this audience is a scientist. If we can frame the right questions, we know we will understand how to answer them. So over the next 10 minutes, I want to take you on a little journey with me about what we will do when we have the next pandemic. And basically, when you think about public health, it's called public health for a reason. It is something that affects all of us. And if we are to do that, we need to understand, is there a problem? How big is it? Are there solutions? What do we need to do to make them work? Are they working? And what do we need to make sure that it doesn't happen again? So I'd like to start with, is there a problem? Suppose there is a new disease, will you recognize it? Let's say all your friends have, you go to a wedding and everybody comes back with diarrhea. Is there a problem? Well, it's likely. In your neighborhood, people start to have lots of respiratory infections. There is an outbreak of fever. Is there anybody who hasn't seen those patterns? We've all seen them. It's just that we don't always think that this is a problem. When does the problem become a true public health problem? It comes from when these cases are really sick. If it's a diarrhea that resolves in two days, nobody cares. If it's an outbreak of cholera or of hepatitis that is affecting 10 or 20,000 people in the city, now you have a problem that needs something to do about it. So basically, if you have prepared clinicians who can share information with public health authorities, 
that actually tells you that there really is a problem. So the three characteristics of any pathogen that determine whether it is going to be a problem is, does the disease make you really sick? Does it spread from people to people? When it affects people, does it affect everybody or just some people? So let's say it's something like influenza. If you've had influenza before, you won't have it again, right? So these three characteristics, if you think about SARS-CoV-2, did cause very severe disease, pathogen we hadn't seen before, very transmissible pathogen until we got to Omicron where severity came down, transmission went up, but the susceptibility of the population changed, so now nobody wants to worry about SARS-CoV-2 anymore. So when I show you a graph like this, immediately, this is just counting cases. If we learn to recognize patterns, then we begin to estimate whether there is a problem, how much of a problem, and already this is giving you ideas about what kinds of solutions you might be thinking of. This is an example of measles. You see that there is one case first, then there is a small cluster of cases, and then there's a bigger cluster of cases. Why is that? Because this is secondary transmission. The first cluster contributes to the second bigger cluster, and the third one would be even larger if everybody was equally susceptible to the disease. But because people are vaccinated, or you can introduce vaccine quickly, you can stop the cluster. The next question is, how big is the problem? So what are the numbers? How quickly are the cases happening? What's the distribution? So what I'm showing you here is a comparison between the US and India across the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, which is shown by the number of cases. Do you really think that in India with our 1.3 billion people, we actually had fewer infections during the Om Omicron wave than in the US, which has one quarter of our population? It's not possible, but based on the data, that's what we see. So when you look at patterns and you begin to question, how big is the problem? Is this really showing what I expected to show? You're well on the way to becoming a public health scientist. And the value of maps for disease, worldwide maps, maps of a city, the control of infectious diseases started with Jon Snow and a map of five streets that showed you where cholera was occurring in London 150 years ago. So the next question is, are there solutions? Everybody remembers two meters, everybody remembers hand sanitizers, some people still wear masks. These are public health measures that depend on disease transmission. Before we knew that SARS-CoV-2 was actually capable of spreading across wide distances, we thought that the two meter distance was going to protect us. We thought the hand sanitizers would protect us because if somebody coughed, the virus would land there and we would touch it. Now we know that that is not true. It's a virus that can persist for much longer. So actually, rather than a hand sanitizer, a fan makes more sense. So knowledge evolves, solutions evolve with time. And then you have to think about what are the treatments for people who are sick. You remember we heard of hydroxychloroquine? Anybody using hydroxychloroquine today? Well, it was based on the principle that hydroxychloroquine was an antiviral in cell culture studies. It didn't hold up when it actually got into people, but we had to do that testing to find out. And then we found out that steroids really worked. Steroids became a mainstay of treatment, and deaths due to SARS-CoV-2 really crashed. 
Then we have to think about how do you prevent transmission, how do you prevent illness, and that's where the role of vaccines comes in, as well as the provision of high quality care. What's needed to make them work? I think you often forget that people are really important. So you may remember people flooding into ICUs, but where are the ICU doctors? You cannot create an ICU doctor on the same time frame as the pandemic evolves, or an ICU nurse. So you have to create the people before you need them. And then, of course, you need resources, you need policies. We had uh, PSA plants being installed across the country, but most of the installations happened after we ran out of oxygen. So planning ahead, making sure that resources are in place are very, very important. But policy matters the most. If you remember all the messes that we had with vaccines, the idea that states were going to buy their own supply, that private hospitals could buy part of the vaccine supply, healthcare policy affects us all, and making sure that our leaders make the right decisions is more important than anything else. Resources can and will be found. CSR funding supported a lot of activities during the pandemic. So one of the things that we should take away is that we must ensure that we don't repeat mistakes. If we learn anything from the pandemic, if we need to learn how to handle viruses, we should make sure that health policies are driven by science and not by convenience. Finally, I think it's really important that we measure whether what we are doing is working or not. I want to share with you the first graph here. Uh, you can see the blue and red lines. That's the mortality rates before and after steroids. Before you had steroids, it's the blue line. Once steroids came in, the deaths almost halved for people who were in hospital. If you look at the data on whether vaccines were working or not, I'll show you two pieces of data. The first graph is from the Ministry of Health website, which compares deaths in people who have been vaccinated and unvaccinated. What you see in the red line, the big mountains on top, in case you can't see the lines, is unvaccinated people. The message is very clear. If you are unvaccinated, you will die. Okay, the next message is in the bottom graphs, which is data actually from other countries which show us that vaccines stop working so well. And that's what tells us when you need a booster dose. Unfortunately, we don't have this data in India, and that's why there continues to be a controversy about when should we boost, what should we boost with, et cetera. So for public health scientists, ask for evidence before decisions are made. So finally, what needs to be done to stop it all happening again? I think the most important word on this slide is preparing society. Pandemics affect us all. Pandemics require all of us to work. Preparedness means that we need to play a role in whatever comes next. I hope I've spent the last few minutes just walking you through that pandemics are not hard to handle. All we need to do is make sure that we ask the right questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Professor Gagandeep Kang, you truly, truly are an inspiration. Dear friends, as we near the conclusion of the function, I would like to call upon my mother, Dr. Mrs. Jeshi Firodia, to propose a vote of thanks. She is not only the foundation of our family, she is an eminent pediatrician of, of Pune, having received her medical education at BJ Medical and at Harvard Medical in Boston, and then completed her specialization in London. 
She has been an amazing doctor, not only for our family, but for the entire city. She's also been doing a, a lot of social medical work. Some of you may not know about it. Through her Asha Tara Foundation, she has been providing free medical assistance to women and children in the rural areas of Maharashtra. It's my privilege and honor to welcome my mother to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Silija. Uh, dignitaries on and off the dais, I have the pleasant and the short task of giving vote of thanks. First and foremost, I salute the three women icons of science and technology. They represent the emerging era of Nari Shakti. They have spared the precious time to come for the award ceremony out of their very busy schedule. Here, I want to share with you all my feelings at the thought of listening to them today on waking up in the morning, how I felt. I felt the rising sun felt but brighter, the sky was deepest blue. Flowers exotic in color and dancing with joy. Beautiful butterflies humming around. Even the rain was pleasant and lovely. So I'm very happy to be with them whole day and I have learned a lot from them. <laughs> Our heartfelt thanks to Dr. Kiran Mujumdar Shah, Dr. Gangadeep, Gagandeep Kang and Dr. Tessy Thomas again. I express my gratitude and appreciation to Dr. Marshall Kar, Dr. Kakod Kar and Dr. Bhatkar, who are the guiding spirit. They are with us since the inception of awards and it's always the tough choice to make the selection from the vast talent of pool in our country. But due to them, the awards go to the most deserving ones. I offer my thanks to our managing committee members, Dr. Sancheti, Dr. Prat Shri Pratapavar, Srimati Leela Punawala, Shri Ravi Pandit, Professor Ahuja, Professor Anil Sahastra Buddhe, Professor Amitav Malik, Dr. Vidya Erodekar, Dr. Rajiv Erodekar, Professor B.B. Ahuja, Dr. K.C. Mohite and Dr. Deepak Shikarpur. They provide guidance to work out the theme and format of the program. I compliment the Rotaract team on efforts to make the take the science quiz to colleges and institutes in Pune. Response is very encouraging. This is the fifth year of conducting the interactive session successfully. My heartfelt thanks to Mr. Dimak Sastrabuddhe and the entire team. And I congratulate the toppers for winning the prizes. I have a pleasure to thank Sri A.V. Chitale, Sri Ravindra Mankani, Shri Kale and an entire team of Mankani, uh, Ravindra Mankani ji for presenting the program in a creative and elegant way on the stage. I express my sincere thanks to the press and the photographers for covering the program well. They are always very cooperative and we hope to get full coverage tomorrow also. In the end, I offer thanks to all of you for participating in our program and encouraging us as always. I announce that you can watch this show again on YouTube. With, with these words, I say goodbye, good day, and take, I take your leave. Ladies and gentlemen, these evenings always inspire me, but they also make me feel humbled. The stars of this evening are like shining stars in the sky. They dazzle us and they inspire us to reach for the skies just like them. If this evening has created some zeal and passion among some of the young students, the stars of tomorrow, to pursue excellence through science and technology and contribute to the progress of our nation, we would have achieved our goal. And I'm sure it will bring a smile to my dear grandfather, Mr. H.K. Frodia's face, who is a star in the great sky smiling upon us. On that note, let me thank all of you for having been a great audience. And thank you for sharing this evening with us and your affection and support. I also hope you enjoyed the evening. 
I want to thank once again our chief guests for being here with us and all the awardees and our award committee members and management committee members. We will meet again next year for the 26th year HK Firoda Memorial Awards. Until then, keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. Goodbye and God bless. Jai Hind. Ravaraj Publicity Private Limited, a shining name in the field of advertising for the last 56 years. We have another feather added to the Ravaraj cap. Ravaraj has been managing the HK Firodia Awards in Science and Technology for the last 25 years. This is where all the topmost scientists have been honoured by the HK Firodia Foundation. From planning, designing, lighting to everything under the roof, Ravaraj Publicity has handled the event with consummate success. For all your needs, come over and connect with the best in the field. Raviraj Publicity Private Limited